the island of Jamaica has given the world a lot to be thankful for. Beautiful beaches, spicy Jamaican rum, delicious jerk chicken, and of course, Bob Marley. In the 90s, the world got to experience another Jamaican hit, Diana King. The perfect timing of a great song with a great movie would have everyone knowing her name and send her career to incredible new heights. Little did people know, however, she was hiding a deep, dark secret that she knew coming clean with would most likely result in a major fallout with family and friends, as well as potential career destruction. Let's find out whatever happened to Diana King. Born to an Indo-Jamaican mother and an Afro-Jamaican father in Spanish town, St. Catherine, Jamaica, Diana Eugenia King came into the world on November 8th, 1970. She was the sixth in line of the total 15 children her parents would have, and she ended up being adopted by her aunt, who she was led to believe was her mother. She didn't realize the woman who would come by every now and then to visit was her actual birth mother until she was 11. Even though the world would get to know her for her chart-topping hits in the US, she began her career on the island singing at church, school, and at local spots in her area. This all began at a very young age as an escape for Diana. Singing was something that she knew she had to do, not because she wanted to, but because she had to. At the age of 11, she suffered a horrific assault and eventually ran away from home. Music and singing were a great escape. She initially didn't want to sing, but she knew it was the one thing that she could do to support herself, so she jumped in head first. After a few years of performing in hotels and clubs, she was asked to be the female singer for the group City Heat, performing with them throughout her teen years. Eventually, Diana would leave the group to do background singing for other Jamaican artists. This move would prove to be a good and also not so good decision. She found her voice being as big as it was, wasn't conducive to being heard the way she wanted it to be heard. And at the time, women with smaller, softer singing voices were much more popular and accepted. She would end up quitting her background gigs, but as soon as she did, the phone rang. It was the a and rep from Columbia Records that just happened to see her performing with Shabaranks at Madison Square Garden, was obviously impressed, and asked her to fly out to New York immediately. She said yes. During their talks about a potential record deal, the powers that be, of course, wanted to hear more from Diana. A demo tape would take care of that easily. However, she didn't have one. So she did the next best thing and did a cover song, Stir It Up by Bob Marley. It did the trick, a double trick really. It got her a record deal and the label loved her version so much, it ended up on the soundtrack for the film, Cool Runnings. The stars came into alignment again when she got the opportunity to sing the hook on the Notorious B.I.G. song, Respect, off his debut album, Ready to Die. At the time, no one knew who he was yet, so it wasn't an experience Diana was fully able to appreciate until much later. Now it was time for Diana to shine on her own. Tougher Than Love, her debut album dropped in April 1995. The month before, the first single titled Shy Guy, co-written by Diana in just 10 minutes for the Bad Boy movie soundtrack, was released, quickly shot to number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100, and became certified gold overnight. Just before going back into the studio to work on her follow-up album, Think Like a Girl, she took some time to get married to her tour manager, Orville Ares, immigrate to the US, and give birth to her first son. She also had a daughter from a previous relationship. Along with the personal success she was experiencing, there was more professional success around the corner as well. Her reggae-style cover of the Dionne Warwick hit, I Say a Little Prayer, which was included on her second album, blazed up the dance charts as soon as it was released. The track got another boost by the motion picture industry, just like Shy Guy, becoming a featured song on the My Best Friend's Wedding soundtrack. Over the next decade, Diana would tour, release several singles, and a new album. She also got a very noticeable tattoo in the middle of her forehead. That means love yourself, live yourself. 
She chose such an unusual spot on her body for it so that anytime she looked in the mirror, she couldn't miss it, especially during her down moments. Little did she know, some major down moments in her life were on the horizon. One day in 2005, Diana began to develop a curious medical condition. For about six months, she had issues walking, plus various aches and pains that couldn't be explained. When she finally got some answers, she was shocked and devastated. It was multiple sclerosis. Initially, depression set in, but eventually gave way to determination to not allow the disease to ruin her life and the pursuit of alternative remedies. In an interview with Malaysia's The Star Online, she said, music was my medicine. I didn't take any medication or treatments. When I went to the doctor, he told me about the medicines and its side effects, and they turned me off. Every song I wrote, my symptoms started to disappear. The music was healing me. I felt it. Every time I wrote a song and was pleased with it, I could feel my legs. The more I wrote, the better I felt, until I was perfectly healed. Now I can walk, run, and dance on stage like before. She made the decision to go the independent route in 2007 by starting her own label, named after her second album, Think Like a Girl. The reason is the same as so many other artists. She wanted to have more creative control and chase fulfillment instead of money. Throughout Diana's career, she's had to deal with people trying to put her in a box, hence the title of reggae fusion artist that often gets attached to her name. Reggae has always been her first love, but over the years, she also enjoyed frequently mixing in R&B and other styles. In 2012, via a Facebook post, Diana publicly came out as a lesbian, making her the first Jamaican artist ever to do so. She wrote, I am woman, mother, aunt, Jamaican, American, international artist, singer, songwriter, band leader, friend, lover, entrepreneur, goddess among other things. And yes, I am a lesbian. The answer to my most asked indirect question. She became comfortable admitting her sexual orientation to herself in her 20s, but chose to keep it private out of fear of the negative backlash it would have on her children. Actually, the final push that she needed to finally make the announcement came from her now adult son, who encouraged her to go for it. It seems that her concerns were valid since several years later, she revealed in an interview that she's remained close to only one of her 14 siblings in the wake of coming out. On the flip side, that same year, she was recognized with the prestigious Vanguard Award at the Out Music Awards in Las Vegas. Her last musical endeavor was a new reggae studio album and an EDM EP she announced she was working on in 2016. As of the making of this video, neither the album nor any singles have been released. In 2018, Diana finally decided to take the plunge and marry her longtime girlfriend, Jamaican violinist, Mijang Webster. And together they are raising their adopted five-year-old daughter. That same year in an interview with the New Indian Express, she said, being true to yourself and living an authentic life is the best decision a person could ever make. I did not know what would happen when I came out. I actually expected the worst, but nothing has felt better. It feels better than money or things or having hit songs, and it is something I highly recommend to anyone. Be yourself in spite of what others may think about you. Self-approval is a freedom and gift that you give to ourselves, and it cannot be taken away from you. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video and subscribe for more amazing content. See you next time.